You are in the right place if it is your goal today to learn more about how to become a CFRE, how to get the application going, how to complete it, and what the requirements are. So for the next hour, we are going to look at all of this stuff together. We are going to hear from two CFREs about the benefits that the CFRE has had for them personally and professionally, and we are going to take your questions. So it's going to be a really good hour. We've got a lot, lot to get through, but it's going to be a good time. And I know all of these people have a wonderful New Year's resolution of becoming a CFRE this year. So this is going to be perfect for you. A couple of questions up front. We are recording today. I'm going to send you a link to the recording and to the slides in about 24 hours. So keep an eye on the inbox of the email that you use to register. Also, we have a question pane. The question pane is staffed by our two fantastic certification team members, Paul Cavazos and Christine Johnson. They are going to be taking your questions, making sure that you have all the info you need. If I say something and you need clarification, you could ask them. We will stop twice and take a look at some of the more popular questions together. We are also very thankful that we are joined today by two fantastic CFREs, Judy Zhu and Andrew Poulter. So you can see them there. They're going to go disappear behind their cameras and come back in about 10 minutes and tell you all about the benefits of being a CFRE. But we're very fortunate that we have their expertise with us today. I also want to thank Connolly and Associates Fundraising for their help with promotion today. I know a number of people joined our webinar through uh, their channel, so thank you so much to Connolly and Associates. All right, so first things first, we're going to do about 10 minutes about what the credential is, hear from Judy and Andrew, and then begin our deep dive into all things application related. All right. So the first thing is, what exactly is the CFRE credential? We are the only globally recognized accredited credential for fundraising professionals. So this is great for you. We are not a North American credential. We are not uh, American credential. We are not specific to one part of the world, right? We're global. This means that if you have donors, funders, projects, you know, whatever happening outside of your home country, your CFRE will mean the same thing there as it does here. Maybe you work for a really large organization like the International Red Cross that has offices around the world. Whether you're talking to your colleagues on your home turf or Hong Kong or Brazil, your CFRE means the exact same thing. We have been around for over 40 years. We've got great longevity in the space. Many people are aware of who we are and what we do and what the credential stands for. There are currently more than 7,800 CFREs today. So this is a great number. It's a wonderful network to join. You are able to be part of our special CFRE only online community. This is a great place where people network and ask each other questions about challenges in their job, but know that you will be part of this network. You may see some conferences even have CFRE only networking events and special things just for you as a CFRE. And everything we do is grounded in ethical best practice fundraising, right? If your nonprofit is not operating ethically and according to best practices, you can run into a lot, a lot of trouble, right? We all know this. We know many nonprofits have their names in the news for the wrong reasons. We also know a lot of people learn fundraising on the job. They haven't gone through a formal process. This can become tricky because it is a way for bad habits to start and to basically get carried through an organization's development department, right? You want to make sure that you have had everything assessed that you know that you are operating ethically at every turn. And best practices, we all know that best practices are what allow us to fundraise effectively, efficiently, and ethically. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. The best practices exist, and that is what the CFRE process is designed to do. It's designed to help you get your arms around everything you need to know with them. 
All right, so some people think, well, there's a lot of degree programs out there. You're telling me the CFRE is a credential. What's the difference? Good question. So the first thing to know about a degree is that it's really your education at a specific point in time. I have a master's in advertising from 2005. It's nearly 20 years old and it's horrendously outdated. If you just even wanna think about all of the things that have happened in the last five years in the world and what that's meant for fundraising, there's been a lot of changes, right? When you have a credential, it is evergreen because a credential you have to recertify with, okay? The CFRE, once you earn it, you recertify every three years. We'll talk more about that later in the hour. And just if anyone's scared, oh gosh, do I have to take the exam every time I recertify? No, you do not have to retake the exam when you recertify. So just know that. But when you have a credential that you are recertifying regularly, it shows that your body of knowledge is sharp. It is grounded in today, right? It's not going to become outdated as quickly as a degree will. Plus, the CFRE credential is far, far, far less expensive than getting a degree. If you earn a degree, let's say you've got one in nonprofit management, that's awesome. It's perfect because it's going to help you earn your CFRE. You don't have to have a degree, but the CFRE and degrees can work well together. But I just want to explain what the difference is between them. And now we're now going to look at what the CFRE signals, right? You have, let's say you've earned your CFRE, you've got the four letters after your name. What has the CFRE process attested that you know? Well, one, it shows that you're competent in ethical best practice fundraising. It shows that you've met a set of internationally recognized standards. You have top -nop notch knowledge that you are operating from, right? Just like your accountant is a CPA and they have attested that they know the ethical best practices for performing their job, that's what the CFRE is signaling for you, that you know how to perform your job to ethical best practices so that your employer, your board, your donors, and your coworkers can all have full faith in your abilities. It also enhances your credibility. Every two years, we do a survey of all CFREs and ask them what the major benefits are of the credential. Every time we run this survey, the results show that enhanced credibility is one of the biggest returns on investment that people enjoy from it. People say they have greater credibility with their employer and coworkers. For those of you that are consultants or might be thinking about becoming consultants, consultants tell us time and time again that it gives them more credibility with the clients and the boards that they work with. And it shows your commitment to the profession. We all know that there's a lot of churn in fundraising. People come in for a few years, they leave. Your employer and your board and coworkers want to know that you're gonna be there for the long haul. This isn't just something that you're doing while you figure out your next step. This is your chosen profession. Because the CFRE is a voluntary credential, you don't have to earn it, but when you do, People know that you're committed, not just to fundraising, but to the profession, and that you have stepped up and you have gone above and beyond. All right, now let's talk about some of the benefits. CFREs often report enhanced recognition, and we hear this a lot from new CFREs. I've had people come up to me at conferences and say, before I was a CFRE, my boss was always second guessing me, trying to poke holes in what I said. But once I became a CFRE, all that stopped. Or once I became a CFRE, I was able to get an internal promotion that I had wanted for several years. And now I got it now that I had my CFRE. People also tell us that it's a great tool for career advancement. And I'm going to show you in a future slide about the salary bump that CFREs enjoy. Many CFREs report that they get called more often by recruiters, that when they receive job offers after they've become a CFRE, that the job offers are stronger, that they are being offered more money. We've had people tell us that they get 
recruiters on LinkedIn monthly, if not more often, contacting them. So if you're looking to drive your career forward this year, the CFRE is a fantastic tool to help you get there and get that recognition. And 98% of CFREs told us that it had a great impact on their feeling of personal achievement. And you may have heard this from CFREs that you know. People will say, I just wanted to see if I could do it. I wanted to prove to myself that I could earn this. And when people earn it, it is such a confidence lift and a boost that, you know, I always thought I could do this, but look at me, I did it. I proved that I have the knowledge. I now have this great uh, understanding of ethical best practice fundraising from an accredited program. And it's a great, great boost. All right, so I told you we talk about the, the salary bumps that people enjoy. Last year, AFP ran their compensation and benefits report, and it found that CFREs earn on average in the U.S. 5 to 16 percent more than non-CFREs with comparable experience that are in a mid-career position. This is excellent for you because obviously everybody wants to be able to earn more money, but it gives you more negotiating power as a CFRE, right? If you are in a negotiation with a job, right? You've got a great offer, but you're looking at the uh, salary. The CFRE is a great tool that you can use to lift that salary number up. Many people just get higher offers anyway, but because you have shown that you know what you say you know, the proof is in the pudding and the proof is that CFRE after your name. In Canada, also great news, the AFP Compensation and Benefits Report found that CFREs in Canada earn 14% more on average. The CFRE process definitely pays for itself. So I know people consider, well, you know, there's time and there's a cost involved. Is it really going to have any difference for me? And so I want you to know that the most recent data from last year is showing this ROI. We have about 50% of CFREs tell us that their employer contributed a part or all of their initial application fee. This data comes from the survey that we do every other year of CFREs. So this is how we know this information. If your new budget for PD took effect this month, you are completely in the right place because this can be the perfect time to talk to your employer about if some of those professional development dollars could go towards your certification, right? Because the certification isn't just for you, it's for your organization. Your boss wants you to be able to talk to the board and say, you know what, I have earned this credential. I have demonstrated my competency in ethical best practice fundraising. Your boss wants you to be able to train your team members to these standards and not just taking a shot in the dark. It's a quality assurance as well, right? Because we all have gaps in our knowledge and unless we address that unless we measure our knowledge against international and recognized standards for our profession, we don't know where our gaps are. And if we don't know where our gaps are, then we can't remedy that, right? So that's what the CFRE process is going to help you do and help you bring better confidence and uh, know-how to your job. All right, so we are very fortunate, like I said today, we are joined by two fantastic CFREs who are going to talk to you about the benefits that they have experienced since they have earned the CFRE. The first person we're going to hear from today is Judy Zhu, who is joining us from British Columbia in Canada, and she earned her CFRE in 2020, so she's got three years under her belt, and she is going to take it away. Thanks, Judy. Thank you, Ashley, and good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'm so honored to be here, and CFRA is always so passionate and dear near to my heart. Um, since I earned my CFRA accreditation, um, it's actually bring a lot of benefits benefits to me and to my career. Uh, but for the for the time's sake, I'm just gonna bring the first with the top three. 
Um, so firstly, definitely a professional credibility with increased job opportunity. So this professional credibility is not only for you, as Ashley mentioned, is also for your organization. Um, I'm not going to lie, you know, once I, I, I put that full letter after my name um, on LinkedIn, there's actually pouring messages from recruiters or even from uh, organization executive themselves and interested for hiring me for their for their organization so really um it's a it's a great professional credibility if you're thinking about a, a, a job change or 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 just increase your or um within your organization and also the donor confidence and so this is also attribute to professional credibility um, because when donor work with you and they know they're working with the uh, subject matter experts um, we, well, I wanted to emphasize that there's only 7,800 of us around the globe, and we are um, international credit, the accreditation. So it really boosts that your donor confidence, because when you work with your donor, um, your donor give give their their wealth their money to you unconditionally so you wanted to make sure to give them that confidence um so that they will continue to trust you and trust your organization's costs and continue supporting it and last but not least as is the ethical standards by having um approved a cfre or being as a cfre you're committed to the highest ethical standards um that when you're conducting a fundraising business so really that's give you a great confidence for you to work as a fundraiser, but also give, you, give your donor a great confidence to work with you um, and your nonprofit organization. Perfect. Thank you so much, Judy. I appreciate you sharing that. And now we are going to hear from Andrew Poulter. Andrew is a CFRE and he has been since 2019. And he is joining us today from Michigan in the United States. And he is going to tell us about the benefits that he has experienced since he earned the credential. Take it away, Andrew. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Ashley. And happy 2024, everyone. I hope everyone's having a great start to the year. So I'm going to talk today about three of the benefits that I've personally experienced um, as a result of getting my CFRE. First is I want to talk about elevating your own credibility with internal and external constituents. In my work at the University of Cincinnati Foundation, I lead a scholarship fundraising team, and we often work with MDs, PhDs, JDs, CPAs, you name it. Um, these are all recognized experts within their own fields. And so having the CFRE allows us to bring a sense of credibility to our work and to show that we are recognized leaders within our chosen profession. In addition to that, in addition to an internal, uh, when working with external, I'm talking about donors. And so as Judy mentioned, we wanna show that we are best practice ethical fundraisers, that these are individuals who can trust the work and the, the uh, advice that we provide. Second, I want to talk about salary potential. So Ashley shared some great stats um, from the survey, uh, somewhere between 5 and 16% saw an increase in salary, 14% uh, increase um, in Canada. And so for myself, um, I saw closer to a 100% increase. It was a massive increase prior to and after getting the CFRE, and I'm sure that will continue um, throughout my career, but I just saw a massive bump in a short amount of time, and so happy to answer questions about that later. Third is I want to talk about new opportunities. As Judy mentioned, the moment you get those four letters behind your name, you're going to hear from recruiters, organizations, uh, people will just kind of come out the woodwork and they see that you're a recognized leader within the fundraising profession. Uh, you're an ethical fundraiser, you're a best practice fundraiser. And so it's allowed me to have opportunities. Um, of course, job opportunities are always out there as a CFRE, but to also speak at conferences, to be recognized as a thought leader, to write pieces on the fundraising profession, the opportunities are endless. And I attribute those to becoming a CFRE. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing that, Andrew. And I want to encourage everybody, if you have questions for Judy and Andrew, you can also put those in the question pane as well. So don't um, feel like that that's all you're going to hear from them. They are going to come back towards the end, but they are here as a resource for you and they are happy to share whatever you need to know. All right. So 
Now we're going to dive into all things application. The first thing to know about certifying is that you start your application for free. You can go to mycfre.cfre.org. So if you want to type that in now and follow along with me, or you just want to bookmark it for later, you can do whatever you want. But that is the direct link to get to the application. You add your information and then you select your test window. So we offer the ability to take the CFRE exam four times, well, sorry, in four windows a year. Each window um, is a couple of months long. I'm gonna talk everything you need to know about test windows, excuse me, towards the end of the hour, but know that you will need to pick a window. You don't have to pick a date. You don't have to know exactly when you're gonna take the exam, but you need to know roughly the time of year that you wanna do it. All right, then after that, that is when you're going to submit with payment. Yes, yes. You can start your application for free. If you started it two years ago, you already know this. If you start it today and you win the lottery three months from now and you you know, aren't going to submit it, you're not out any money. It's totally fine. You're only going to pay at the time you are ready to submit. We will then review your application. You see Paul Cavazos here. He is our app reviewer. He's a great resource for that. All your questions on the application review. And once he approves your application, that is when you will be sent an email with instructions to book your exam. And that's when you're going to look at the date that you want to take the exam. But up until then, you know, you've got a lot of time to figure that out. And once you get that email, if you need to sit on it for a while while you wait for a schedule to shake out, you know, your work travel, whatever, that's totally fine. Then you're going to take the exam, and when you pass it, you are a CFRE, right? That's the point you become a CFRE is when you have passed the exam. And then you're going to recertify every three years to keep current. All right, so with that said, you can also start your application for two, for two places on our homepage here. You can see, so if you forget that URL, don't worry, you can always get to the application. The application is looking at what you have done since January 1, 2019. We're accredited, and part of our accreditation is we look back at what you've done in the last five years. So when I'm talking about the application, everything is going to be what you have done from January 1, 2019 forward is what's going to count. The application itself will never expire. If you started one a year ago, we still have it. So don't worry if you started one ages ago and haven't logged in, we still have it. So go get into that application. You don't have to start from scratch. And you can begin the application before you have met a single requirement. We actually highly recommend that you begin your application, even if you're just contemplating becoming a CFRE, because it's going to make your life a lot, lot easier. And I'll tell you about why. Um, in a couple of slides. But for now, we're going to just look at what is the feel of the application when you get in there. The first thing to know is it's going to say pending. That just means it's in process. So as soon as you start your application, you're going to see that right there. All of the major sections of the application are on the left side. It's super easy to navigate. And then in here, it's where it talks about the points requirement. So we're going to delve in to what those points requirements mean. Now, for every section, there's information about how, how to earn the points for that section. And it's right at the top. So I'm going to talk through a lot of this today, explain it, get your questions answered. You don't have to memorize this. It's always super handy right up at the top there. All right, so for education, you need 80 points. And my running joke is that now people say, well, what the heck is a point, Ashley? Well, the way that you earn points is oftentimes by attending fundraising education, webinars, conferences, workshops, masterclasses, panel discussions, right? All these great things. Super easy. You earn one point per hour that you're attending. That's all there is to it. If you go to an in-person conference, I want to show you how to enter this. This is a screenshot of the application, and you can see where there's an area for your role is attending, and then the start and the end date of the conference, right? Super easy. 
But where it says name of course, that is where you're gonna enter the name of the conference, okay? Don't tell us every session you attended at a conference. Sometimes people put in, you know, 10, 15 separate entries that don't do that. Just give us one entry for the conference as a whole. And where it says presenter, just write various. We don't need to know every single presenter that you saw. You can see that there is a box there that says hours earned. So that's just how many hours you were at that conference attending sessions. The way to calculate this is if you've got a PDF of the agenda, maybe a hard copy of the agenda, maybe it's in the conference app that you put on your phone. This is where you can just say, okay, you know, each session was an hour and I went to seven sessions across a day and a half. That's the easiest way to do it. Sometimes people freak out right about now and think, I don't have those agendas. How am I gonna calculate this? You have the option of contacting the conference organizer and asking. They get these requests all the time, trust me. So don't be shy. You want your points, you earned your points, you should get your points. So you can always double check with them, right? But I wanna tell you the biggest number one application mistake is that people forget to sub subtract out the non-education time at a conference. If you go to a one-day conference and it runs 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., it's easy to think, oh, it's a seven-hour conference. I got seven points. If you had lunch for an hour, you need to subtract that out because we can only count the actual education time, okay? You have to subtract out networking, drinks with the exhibitors, you know, anything that isn't you learning in an education section session. And now if you're thinking, Ashley, that doesn't sound fun. I don't wanna add all this stuff up. I have really, really good news for you. We have a number of education providers who go into a database that we have that we're gonna look at in the next slide. And it means that all of their education lives in the application. And if you have attended it, you don't have to know all of the stuff I told you, right? What you're gonna do is you're gonna come over to the section that says education from approved providers. When you click into it, you're gonna see a page like this. You are simply gonna select the name of the provider from a dropdown, okay? It's all right there for you. And then you're gonna select from another dropdown what you attended from that provider. So I've done this for AFP ICON last year. The only thing you need to type in yourself is the completion date. That will be the last day of the conference if it's a multi-day conference. If it's an on-demand webinar, it's gonna be the day you watch the webinar, right? Whatever the last day was, you got it, you're smart. And then right below it, our system tells you how many points it's worth. This is great because if you have been going to conferences or workshops, webinars, whatever, for the last couple of years, go in here first and see if what you attended is here. You can go through your old calendar, expense reports, credit card report, you know, uh, statements, you know, whatever it is that you want to do to kind of jog your memory about what you were attending. But before you go through the trouble of in typing everything in yourself, have a look here because you may have dozens and dozens of points that are just, you know, right here. If you are thinking I need to earn a lot of points, I know there's no way that I've already done 80, totally fine. We have a database, it's called My Education Finder, and you can search in here for pre-approved education. This is just the education that I showed you that's going to populate in the application. This includes virtual, on-demand, and in-person training. So it's a one-stop shop. It lists the trainings. Many are free or low cost. So if you are looking for education, this is a great, great resource that takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. And there are many, many, many options in here. Now, this is one of my favorite 
fun things to tell you about the application, which is if you have gone to a conference where they make the recordings available afterwards, this is your chance to bank up a lot of points off the cost of one conference registration. However, you do need to just make a separate entry for viewing the recordings because the days are not going to match and we don't know how long you spent watching them, right? Somebody could watch five hours and somebody else could watch 25 hours. So you are going to have to enter this yourself. So for the recordings, you're just going to do the start and the end dates from when you watch them and just put recordings after the name of the conference so it's clear to us that it's just the recordings because otherwise we're going to think, how did you do 25 hours of on-site time at a conference? That seems a little out there, but just put recordings and we will know precisely what you are telling us. All right, so a couple of tips for education. We highly recommend that you save your registration confirmation emails when you register for education. This is your proof of attendance. We do audit every 10th application. So if that's you, it's completely random. Don't worry about it now. You know, some people get worried about being audited before they've even started an application. Don't sweat it. It's fine. Paul will walk you through it step by step if you do get audited. But it will just make everything a lot easier if you have your confirmation emails. Plus, these are going to jog your memory about what you've attended. If you go on education that is not already in the application or my education finder, save the agenda so you can do the calculation yourself for the time in the sessions. Log your education straight away. This is a huge, huge way that people shoot themselves in the foot. They go to a lot of education and then they think, okay, I'll start my application now. And then they start and they go, oh my gosh, I can't remember half the stuff I attended. And they end up leaving a lot of points on the table. All right, so now we can also take up to 10 points of non-fundraising education. So this is only for you attending it and you'll just tell us in this drop down here. This, you will always have to type everything in yourself. We won't have this because it's non-fundraising related. This <laughs> is, something that you have to make sure is relevant to your job, right? The origami course that you took on the celebrity cruise last year, that's not what we're talking about, right? That's not going to count. It needs to be something that's going to ladder up to your job. So you can see it could be a writing course, finance, leadership, technology, management, all of these things are within that realm of what we're thinking about when we're thinking about relevant non-fundraising education. So if you've done any of that since January 1, 2019, you can get points. If you present, and if you don't want to present, you don't have to present, but just know if you are a person who presents fundraising education, it must, must be fundraising related if you're presenting, you'll earn yourself two points per hour that you present existing material and three points per hour when you present new material for the first time. If you, when you're presenting, you need to have an entry that shows that you were a presenter. Keep in mind that if you present at a conference you also attend, you're going to have two entries, one for presenting, one for attending. All right, you're gonna tell us that it was fundraising related because that's the only kind of presenting that's going to qualify. And then you're just going to tell us how many hours the presentation was, and our application will do that math. So you don't have to remember, oh, is this two hours? Is this three hours? I can't remember what Ashley told me. Just put in, you know, the time that you presented, and it will do that math for you. Uh, beware, a common mistake people make is that they think that they can get these points for presenting related to their job. I think my video is lagging here, so I'm gonna turn that off. Um, and you will just know that if you're training staff, if you're training board, that your, your board presentations, you know, here's how to do thank you messages here, you know, that's not gonna count. Don't factor in prep time either when you're doing your 
presentation calculation. You're just going to factor in the time that you were up there presenting. We can also award points if you have academic degrees. If you don't have an academic degree, that's fine. It's not required at all, but just know that we can award points. And the great thing about this is that it's any year, any major. If you have a bachelor's of Italian literature from 2004, it's fine. It's gonna, it's gonna qualify. You'll earn yourself 10 points for a bachelor's, a master's, a PhD, or a JD, and five points per associate's degree. We can take up to 40 points of academic degrees. So if you've got a bachelor's and a master's, rad. You've got 20 points right there. So if you've got an academic degree, great. If you don't have an academic degree, don't worry about it. Another way you can earn points is through service learning. This is our term for volunteering. You can earn up to 10 points and you will earn one point per year per org you volunteer with, right? So pretty easy, one point per year per org where you're a volunteer. It does not have to run the full calendar year. So if you look at the example on the screen here, the start date and the end date are both December. Many volunteer opportunities don't run the full year. We get it. Should you serve as a committee or board member uh, on, on, for a nonprofit, you will earn two points per year per org. If you're on a committee for your local AFP chapter, that counts. Maybe your children's PTA, maybe a committee at your place of worship these are going to qualify. All right, now a few education tips. We highly, highly recommend that in your personal email, you keep a folder of anything you want for your CFRE proof, whether this is receipts, event agendas, registration confirmation emails, whatever you want. Don't put it in your work email, because if you put your notice in at work, I guarantee the last thing that you're going to think about is I better grab all my CFRE proof out. You can have extra points. You can go above the 80 points if you want. You don't have to, but if you want to give yourself some wiggle room, that's fine. We do appreciate if you spell out acronyms the first time you use them, just so we know exactly what you mean. And a huge, huge mistake that people make frequently is they keep putting non-fundraising education as fundraising education. So just double check that. Many kinds of education qualify. We've given you lots and lots of options. You can see them on your screen here. All right, sometimes people wonder, okay, well, I went on all this education, what's gonna qualify? Well, ask yourself if it was fundraising related and if it's not fundraising related, did it provide relevant info for me to help me do my job? It needs to be at least 45 minutes. That's really not a problem. It's just when people go to those little 20 minute sessions in the exhibit hall, that tends to be the only kind of trip up there. And it needs to be completed from January 1, 2019 onward, except academic degrees, any year, any major for those degrees. All right, Paul, we're at our first question break. Hi, thanks, Ashley. Um, so we have been getting many questions just to verify that if you do have multiple degrees, such as two masters or a bachelor's and a master's, you can count both, correct? Or correct. all of them? Yep, yep, you'll count all of them. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, let's see, what other, we have some great questions coming in. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I do apologize if we can't get to them right now, but again, email us at succeed at cfre.org if we're unable to answer your questions during the webinar. Um, okay, so what does the timeline sort of look like to get through the entire certification process? Great question. It depends on how much education you've done and how long you've been in the profession. We're going to talk about um, there's two application sections left and they are much, much, much shorter than education. So we'll get through them quickly. 
but you know, some people get, get through the whole thing in six months and some people, you know, might take two or three years. If you really stay on top of doing that education, you can get through it pretty quickly because the faster you get your CFRE, the faster you get the benefits of being a CFRE, right? You don't want to go on your next job hunt without your CFRE. And we'll take one more question. Perfect. Um, let's see. Uh, um, do you need to watch... If you're watching like a webinar, does it have to be watched live or can you watch recorded webinars for credit? Either work. Live, recorded, it's all good. It's all good. All right. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for these great questions. I know we're, <laughs> we have 20 minutes left, so we're going to keep moving and grooving. The second out of the three application sections is professional practice. And just know you need to have worked 36 months in a paid fundraising role in the last five years. At least 50% of your job must be fundraising. Your entry will look like this if you're a staff member of an organization. Tell us that you're a staff member, your start date, your end date, the employer, their phone, and your job title. You know all this. It, it's very, very easy to, to fill this in. All right. If you're a consultant, many, many consultants are CFREs. You've probably noticed that. You must have a client for those months, right? Those 36 months, you must have had a client for each of those months. I can't say, hey, I'm a consultant and it takes me four months to get a client and I start counting from now. I have to actually be working Pro bono work counts, but you must have a contract. And if you're a consultant, you're just going to tell us there. And then the client name. All right. And what you worked on. The third and final application section is professional performance. This is you raising money. We are accredited, and our accrediting body only lets us use one currency. So. I'm going to tell you that the requirement is 1.375 million US dollars or whatever the equivalent is in your currency. That is why it is US. We have a currency converter in the application. We have over 1,200 CFREs in Canada right now. We have CFREs from over 25 countries. If you're in a country that is not on US dollars, it's totally fine. It, it's just that there's a converter inside the application. So you need to have raised or been, your work with a team has raised 1.375 million in the last five years. And this is really, really simple. It's straightforward how you're gonna fill this out. You're gonna just tell us the funds that you raised, the dates of the activity that you were there or um, you know the organization where you were. If you wanna upload documentation, we can take an audited financial, annual report, sign letter from your supervisor, all of these things are, are going to be fine. If you're in a really small shop, just know that we do have a way that you can earn points through communications and management projects. So you will absolutely have an avenue towards becoming a CFRE. Don't think I work in a really tiny org and I'm never going to raise that money because we do have a way for you to make this work for you. I'm just going to kind of go quick because I know we're short on time. Okay, that professional performance, the funds you have raised, that is a team sport. If Paul, Andrew, Judy, and I together work on a direct mail piece that brings in $300,000, there's no way to say, well, Judy brought in this much and Andrew brought in this much, and right? We would take that full 300,000 and we would each claim that for ourselves because it was a collective team effort, right? We know most people aren't, you know, on an island on their own bringing in all of the funds. For events, you will give us the gross. That's the number you'll put in. And just make sure that your professional performance matches the practice. And what I mean by that is don't tell us you raised $5 million at Easter Seals and then only tell us that you worked at the YMCA, right? Next question break. That was a quick one. Oh, great. Well, okay, here we go. Um, so 
if you're working on your application um, and you've met all the requirements, do you need to keep adding more data or should you just stop? If you've met all the requirements, that is when you will want to submit your application. That would be my best advice. If you want to go over a couple of points just to have a buffer, you can absolutely do that, but you can stop once you hit the requirements if you want. Great. Uh, when you attend webinars or conferences for CFRE credit hours, do you need to collect any sort of supporting documentation at the end to, to or do you just track your participation in the application? Track it in the application. If it's pre-approved, yeah, just go ahead and put it in the application. And then if you want to save a registration confirmation email or something like that yourself in your personal email, that's always well advised. And with our new application system, you can actually upload that documentation to each individual entry. So if you don't want to keep it in your inbox or if you just want to not have to worry about keeping track of it, just upload it with your entry. It'll save in the, in the application and you won't even have to think about it. Exactly. Uh, last question. Some of the classes I've taken haven't explicitly said that they have CFRE credit. Would they still qualify? If they're fundraising related, yes. So don't worry about that. People can get really hung up on, well, it's not already pre-populating in the application. That's fine. There's way, way, way too much fundraising education for us to be able to fit all of it in this application on a global scale. So we have what people have submitted to us to make your life that much easier. But if you attend something that isn't there, don't sweat it. If it's fundraising related, you're golden. All Thank right. You. Thank you, Paul. All right. So I promised you we would talk about test windows. So this is them. You can see on the left uh, nav exam window selection is in red. You're going to tell us which test window you want to take the exam in. We offer the exam every month of the year except December, because why would you do that to yourself, right? It's already hectic enough. Like I said, you're not committing to a date. You're just going to commit to a window at this point. When your application is approved, you will have up to one year to take the exam. Most people study 40 to 80 hours. If you're trying to back out how to pick the exam window, that's my best uh, tip for you is think, okay, if I need to study 80 hours, which window makes the most sense for when I can be clear headed to take my exam, not distracted by work and crazy stuff in my personal life, you know, don't take the exam two days before your wedding. You're smart, you knew that, but you know, just have a think about that when you select. Don't schedule your exam for the last possible minute. Don't do it. If you get sick, if there's a winter storm, if, you know, some force majeure happens out there, you don't want to put yourself in a bind. Back out from the study timeline. I'm going to study 80 hours. I can study five hours a week. All right. I know that I'm going to be able to study across th these weeks. This week I can't because work's busy. I'm going to back it out. So it's really, really simple. Just, you know, your schedule better than anybody. Be realistic. Don't try to take the exam, you know, two weeks after you submit your application if you haven't already started studying. You know, you're not going to be able to just rock into the test center and have your, um, I, you know, just your experience and your charm carry you through, right? You do need to study. I know many, many people have a lot of anxiety about the exam, and I'm going to run our exam webinar next month where I pretty much am just like your sensei, and, you know, we we really help people get to a point where they feel good about it and they feel confident in it, but don't let your worry about this exam stop you from reaching all of you, these great benefits that come with being a CFRE. You are very, very smart, and this exam is on what you do day in, day out. Now, also inside the application, this is one thing I really love, is the application summary page. So it's going to show you exactly where you are still working towards meeting a requirement and where you've already filled in what you need to fill in.
you can look at this at any time and it's going to help you know exactly where you are and where you need to go. The cost to become a CFRE is 700 US dollars if you are a member of a participating organization. So you see this list of orgs, these are all participating organizations. They have an MOU with us that they give their members uh, a discount, you know, th th their members get a discount with us. We will verify your membership. You must remain an active paid member through your exam date. If you are not, you will be charged either the difference, so 175 US dollars, or you will need to reinstate your membership. We do verify these, so just keep that in mind. This fee is all inclusive. This includes Paul reviewing your application. If he finds an error or he has to send it back for any reason, you will not, not be charged to resubmit it. So don't worry about that. It includes all testing fees. When it comes time to you to take the exam, you're not gonna pay anything to the test center. When you become a CFRE, we give you a digital badge that you can put on LinkedIn and Twitter. And it also includes us printing and mailing your certificate anywhere in the world. So that fee is all inclusive of all of those things. Once your application is approved, like I said, we're gonna give you that email with the instructions to book your exam. You have up to one year to take the exam and you're gonna to plan to study those 40 to 80 hours. All right, now we are going to bring back our two fabulous CFREs and they are going to take us through their advice because I know you're probably thinking I'm ready to roll. It's New Year's resolution time. I'm gonna get this thing going. So Judy, we will start with you and your excellent advice. Thank you, Ashley. Um, first of all, I would really say understand the requirements. Um, as you can see, we're trying to put put in a lot of information in the presentation like this. And I wanted to give a huge kudos to Ashley, Paul, Christine, and all of the team member at CFRE International. They are there to provide support and to support fundraiser like us to become a CFRE. And also assess your knowledge gaps and engage in professional development. Um, so when we're calculating our points, I would say not just go for the points that are easier to get and really to go for the point that you're identified gap in your um, in your professional knowledge or if it could be a more fundraiser hours, it could be more volunteer hours and go from there. Um, and also use there's amazing resources. And so what I use um, the text content outline, which is available on the CFRE website, and to use that six domains to assess my knowledge gaps. And last but not least, and to create a study plan once you submit your application, to create a study plan, but also take advantage of CFRE resources. Those are um, amazing resources on the CFRE website, but they're also a CFRE ambassador um, around the world, myself included. So please do feel free to reach out to us. Back to you, Ashley. Thank you, Judy. That's great. Thank you so much. All right, um, and a great plug for the ambassador program. We can match you with a CFRE ambassador around the world in all different time zones, and you can pick their brain about becoming a CFRE. All right, and now Andrew is gonna talk us through his advice for you to get started. Okay, thank you so much, Ashley. So if you're on this call, you are likely considering becoming a CFRE and you're somewhere in the process, maybe you've already started an application, I would take this time in January to start building out your plan right now. So start talking to your boss, share that this is a priority, share um, that you want to make this, if you have to choose between a conference or getting your CFRE, maybe this is your professional development opportunity for the year. So talk to them and outline the plan. How are you going to become a CFRE this year? Next is start your application now. There are so many hours um, of conferences that I have likely forgotten about, but I did capture them because I just went into the CFRE application, which is free by the way, and I updated them in real time. When I went to AFP ICON, 
Uh, I entered everything that I attended, got all the hours. So nothing was lost there and just capture those hours. One thing that I do um, is each fiscal year, I'll capture the dollars raised. And every time I raise another gift, I just bump up that number. So I just edit it at any time, go in, save it. And now I can see, wow, I'm even closer to my goal of becoming a recertified CFRE. And last is do what you need to take the exam one time. So if you are an individual who prefers to have a study group, there are study groups out there. CFRE has them listed on their website. Um, if you're someone who needs an accountability partner, individuals like Judy and myself are more than happy to step up and work with you on this journey. Um, perhaps you like to study alone. So there is a CFRE study guide that I would highly encourage you get and spend time with that. So there are all sorts of resources. They're all on the CFRE website, but please reach out to Ashley if you have an interest in connecting with an ambassador, Judy, or myself. Back to you, Ashley. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, Andrew. And I hope everybody feels like they're ready to get going. As Andrew said, you just start your application, even if you're contemplating it. One thing I love is that if you're going to track all of your education that you're attending in there, you can actually use this at your annual review time because you'll have one repository for all of the education you've gone on over the years. So when you have your annual review with your boss, you can just point to it and say, look at all of the great stuff I've been doing. Talk to your boss about how they might be able to support you in becoming a CFRE, if there's professional development money that they can um, provide for you. Some people cut a deal with their boss and they say, look, I'm going to pay that application fee up front. And when I pass the exam, you reimburse me. So you can get creative. And you have earned one point today in the non-fundraising education section that you can go ahead and log if you want. So there's the information there. And we've got four minutes left. So we are going to jump into some Q&A. If there are questions that come to you after today, please send them to succeed at cfre.org and we will get you whatever information you need. We are really responsive and easy to work with and want to help you realize your CFRE goals. All right, so with that said, Paul, what are some other questions we've got out there? Great, so this question is related to actual funds raised in the professional performance section. Should we report these funds raised by campaign or by type of funds for the year? Uh, how, do we, how do you want us to report actual funds raised? Yeah, Paul, do you want to take that one because you're reviewing yeah. this? Yeah, absolutely. So the good thing about this new application, in our previous application, we asked you to separate each um, sort of campaign by by the type of funds. And this new application, we don't ask you to do that anymore. So everything that was raised in a given fiscal year, it doesn't matter what type of campaign or, or how it was uh, brought in, you just list that as a single entry for that year and put, put the total um, that was raised for that um, fiscal year. And then that way you can just go through each fiscal year and um, just put the cumulative total. And that will make it a lot easier to get through that professional performance section. Um, if your application is approved, but you don't take the exam in the same year, uh, is it possible for the, the application to uh, like expire or for the points to expire? How does that work? Yes. So when your application is approved, you have up to one year to take the exam. So actually, let me go back. Let's see if I can do this kind of quickly and get back to the test windows. So let's say, you know, today is the ninth and my application is approved today, but that's only going to give me until November 30th. Um, or sorry, yeah, until November 30th of this, of this year, take the exam. That's plenty of time, right? I'm totally going to have my 80 hours. I'm going to be able to get through that. But keep in mind that if, like, let's say you submit your application on, uh, what do we want to say here? Like December 31st, you know, you're going to only have, you're going to kind of lose a month off of it. So does that answer the question? Uh, yeah, and I think as far as like worrying about whether things on the educate like your education expires or if your application won't be good, that's that doesn't matter. Once your application is approved, it's approved for a full year. So even if we move from uh, 2024 to 2025, your what's been approved on your application 
doesn't expire. You don't have to resubmit with new stuff. So once you're approved, you're approved. So that's exactly. good. Exactly. Yeah. So if you get approved July 15th of this year, like you can go ahead and take that into 2025. Yep, exactly. Um, we had a couple of questions about why isn't uh, so-and-so organization a part of our uh, participating organization list? They have to sign up. So if they haven't signed up, then um, they're not in there. So there are about 30 that are currently in there. But if um, not, it's just one that do doesn't have that agreement with us. It's not, you know, that there's anything wrong or, you know, anything like that. Uh, okay, and if we don't pass the test the first time, is the application still good for a second try? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Great, thank you. Well, we're at time. So thank you everyone for being with us today. Thank you to Judy and Andrew for sharing their information. I've seen the question box has just been really popping. So I'm hoping we got everybody the information that they need. If not, as always, you can go over to your uh, email and just drop us a line at succeed at cfre.org and we'll be more than happy to get in touch with you. Look out in about 24 hours for the email from me that's going to have a link to this recording and the slides. So thank you everyone for being with us today and we wish you all the best in reaching your CFRE goals. Take care. Good luck everyone.